Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the briefing on COVID-19 in New Brunswick. Bon après-midi, tout le monde. Bienvenue à cette mise à jour. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's update on the COVID-19. Speaking on behalf of the province today are the province's chief medical officer of health, Dr. Jennifer Russell, and the Honorable Dorothy Shepard, the Minister of Health. The province's chief medical officer of health and the Honorable Dorothy Shepard. Minister of Health. Dr. Russell. Thank you, Bruce. Merci, Bruce. Bon après-midi à toutes et à tous. Good afternoon, everyone. Santé publique a confirmé. Public health has confirmed the new, the first New Brunswick case of a rare blood clot reaction to the AstraZeneca vaccine. This reaction is known as vaccine-induced immune thrombo, thrombotic thrombocytopenia (VITT) and is associated with low platelets. A New Brunswicker aged. 30 to 39 received the Covishield vaccine, the Serum Institute of India version of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine in mid-March. This was prior to the March 29th recommendation from the National Advisory Committee on Immunization not to be provided not this vaccine to persons under the age of 55. This individual received treatment and recovered. For reasons of patient confidentiality, I cannot provide further details. Has confirmed the first New Brunswick case of a rare blood clot reaction to the AstraZeneca vaccine. This reaction is known as vaccine induced immune thrombotic thrombocytopenia, VITT. It is associated with and it is associated with low platelets. The New Brunswicker, aged between 30 and 39 years of age, received the Covishield vaccine of the AstraZeneca COVID 19 vaccine at mid March, and this was prior to the March 29th recommendation from the National Advisory Committee on Immunization not to provide this vaccine to persons under the age of 55. This individual has received appropriate treatment for someone having received the vaccine and has since recovered. For reasons of patient confidentiality, I cannot provide further details. Now, these reactions are extremely rare. We see them in approximately one in every 100,000 to 250,000 doses, uh, but they do happen and they are treatable. Uh, there is information on our website uh, and the Public Health Agency of Canada website. While every adverse reaction is unfortunate, it is important to keep in mind how rare these incidents are. And I would like to highlight the benefit of this vaccine and all vaccines in terms of providing uh, protection against the much higher risks that come with COVID-19 infection and indeed blood clots as a result of COVID-19 infections. The AstraZeneca vaccine remains a good choice for people who are at risk of severe outcomes from COVID-19 and would otherwise have to wait several months to access another vaccine. And this is especially true as we see variants of concern, such as the UK variant and the South African variant circulating now, which have much more uh, aggressive symptoms and, and severe outcomes. We never know where and when the next surge of cases uh, are going to appear in the province, and we must protect everyone and be prepared for those surges. We have 2,500 doses of this vaccine in our current supply, and we will make sure they are used safely and appropriately for those who have mobility issues and are not able to come to a clinic. Remaining scheduled AstraZeneca clinics for those 55 and over will continue as planned uh, this week and next. Those 55 and over have an increased risk of complications from COVID-19, and the benefit of the vaccine outweighs these risks. We will continue to monitor the effects of all vaccines and ensure they are used properly based on current expert advice. La ville d'Edmonston et le secteur d'avoisinant the city of Edmonston and surrounding area has now been under lockdown for 10 days. This has been a hardship for the people of the Madawaska region and has added the, to the stress of their daily lives. I want to thank all of those in Edmonston who are following public health guidance and direction. Dedication are helping to prevent illness and save lives. 
We have seen cases where people have not immediately sought a COVID-19 test when symptoms emerged, and so we do need people to continue to get tested for COVID-19. This is very, very important. Il y a trop de gens qui ne limitent pas leur contact étroit au moment. There are too many people who are not staying within their one household bubble. There are too many people who are not properly isolating themselves from others when advised to do so by public health. That can happen anywhere in the province, and we see that with the people who travel. When we're not self-isolating properly. And definitely, we really need to have everybody's cooperation to get outbreaks under control, including the one in Edmonston and future outbreaks as well. We don't want to see more infections uh, and more illness and more hospitalizations. So um, we're going to show a slide right now. And what this slide shows is that the outbreak, um, in terms of the course of the outbreak in Zone 4 from March 22nd until today, so the first dark bar uh, is showing uh, March 25th when public health put a circuit breaker in place by moving the area to the red alert level. And the second dark bar is on April 10th when the lockdown was declared in the Edmonston area. And this graphic shows that uh, despite all of our efforts and all of your efforts, uh, the case numbers are remaining stubbornly consistent in that area. So they have come down slightly, but they're still staying at a steady state, and, and that's not where we want to go. So there has been a modest improvement, um, but it's not enough. So in the first 10 days of this month, when Zone 4 was at the red alert level, the area reported an average of 7.6 new cases each day. And the 10 days since the lockdown began, the average number of new cases has declined slightly to six new cases per day. And the presence of the new variants of COVID-19 virus, uh, which are more contagious and more aggressive in terms of the severity of symptoms um, than the original strain, is adding to the challenge that we're facing. There's no question. Um, but if everyone in the lockdown area continues to follow public health guidance closely and consistently, then we will be in a much better position to limit the impact of this outbreak. Il y a présentement 100 cas actifs de we now have 100 active cases of COVID-19 in Zone 4 and the vast majority within the lockdown area. I appreciate the efforts of those in the Edmonston area that are heeding public health guidance. Heightened risk of new exposures at any time uh, when, when people are not following public health directions uh, very, very specifically and precisely. So we can see infections appearing in, in family members or household members if there's a person who traveled outside the province and if they didn't uh, self-isolate properly. And again, prior to the strains that we're seeing right now, uh, there's a certain level of safety and security around self-isolation happening in your household with other people there and having a separate bathroom, etc. cetera. Uh, but these new infections, these new strains, are so much more contagious that it's very difficult to safely self-isolate in the same household with other people. So we are seeing the spread of the new variants um, from travel outside New Brunswick. And what that means is that travel is riskier now than, it, than ever, uh, than an ever, than at any other time during the pandemic. So if you are going to travel, you must be prepared to properly self-isolate away from your loved ones for an entire two-week period, regardless of if you tested negative when you uh, were at an airport or at a location before you arrived in New Brunswick. You need to still self-isolate. So if you can't do that, then you really shouldn't travel. So it is as simple as that. Je suis heureuse d'annoncer que pour la première fois, I am pleased to report that we have no new confirmed cases of COVID-19 in New Brunswick. This is the first time this has happened in four months. There are now 139 active cases of COVID-19 in the, our province. There are 21 New Brunswickers now in hospital due to COVID-19, including eight who require intensive care. I ask again that you keep these New Brunswickers in your thoughts and prayers. I'm pleased to report that we have no new confirmed cases of COVID-19 in New Brunswick. And this is the first time that this has happened in over a month. Again, we've been in a steady state of having several cases, you know, between on average 10. Now we're, we're down to six over the last month each day. So now this is the first time that we don't have any. 
um, but I still need people to continue to get tested even if you have mild symptoms. There are now 139 active cases of COVID-19 in our province, and there are 21 New Brunswickers who are now in hospital due to COVID-19, including eight who require intensive care. And I ask again that you keep these New Brunswickers in your thoughts and prayers. Our best weapon against the further spread of COVID-19 is to get as many New Brunswickers vaccinated as quickly as we can. We have now provided 185,548 New Brunswickers with at least one vaccine dose. In the last week alone, more than 45,000 New Brunswickers have been vaccinated. And Minister Shepherd will have more to say shortly on the progress that uh, our vaccine rollout has had. And we now have spent more than a year on this pandemic journey. And it may seem that the road has never been darker and more treacherous than it is today. We do have some obstacles and challenges, there's no question. Um, but really, when you take into account our situation here in New Brunswick and how very, very different it is compared to our, um, our fellow Canadians in Ontario, uh, we are watching that situation with alarm and concern. Le nombre de nouveaux, signalés, nouveaux cas signalés en Ontario. The New cases are being reported at record levels every day in Ontario's healthcare system is stretched to its limits. We don't want that to happen here. We don't want to lose the, rec the record of success we have enjoyed over the last 13 months of the pandemic. Many of us are really uh, challenged by the ongoing public health restrictions. And everyone would really like to have a normal life again, uh, some version of normal. But really and truly, in order to get past these next challenges and hurdles, we all have to buckle down and, and stay the course for the next uh, several months. We need now more than ever for people to wear masks. We need now more than ever for people to maintain their two meters of physical distance from others and continue to uh, wash your hands thoroughly and regularly and keep your number of close contacts extremely low. Nous devons tous rester à la maison quand nous ne sentons pas bien. We must all stay home when we feel unwell and seek testing if we have symptoms or are aware we have been exposed to the COVID-19 virus. And we must all avoid travel outside the province whenever possible. We continue to do what we have learned over the past year with renewed dedication and determination for a little while longer so we can all be prote protected here in New Brunswick. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Bonjour. Though we are pleased to be able to report no new active cases today, it is important that we all remain vigilant. Overall, the number of new cases of COVID-19 in our province has continued, along with the number of cases caused by the UK and South African variants. As Dr. Russell has said, public health is keeping a watchful eye on what is happening in Zone 4, the Edmonston region. In spite of the measures taken, the number of active cases in that area have not gone down as much as we had hoped they would. I add my voice to Dr. Russell's in asking that everyone do everything within their power to slow the spread of this virus, not just in Zone 4, but across our province. We are seeing how quickly this third wave of COVID is spreading in other provinces, and we do not want to see that happen here. I know that so many of the people who live in Zone 4, the Edmonston region, truly are following the rules and are doing everything right, and I understand that they are tired. They have been under lockdown for more than a week, and things don't seem to be getting any better. Now is not the time to lose hope. Now is the time for compassion and grace for others and for ourselves. We are in this together. What is happening in Zone 4 could happen anywhere in our province because the new variants of COVID-19 are more contagious and they spread more quickly. All it takes is for one of us to let our guard down just a bit. So please, I know you are tired and I know this is hard, but please dig deep and continue to follow the rules. And where possible, go above and beyond to keep one another healthy and safe. This virus does not move on its own. So the less we move, 
the less opportunity there is for the virus to spread. No travel is permitted in and out of the lockdown area or within the lockdown area except when necessary, such as for vaccinations, medical appointments, work, or to purchase essential goods. Do not travel areas at different alert levels. Do not travel between areas at different alert levels. Follow the directives of public health that apply to the area where you live. It is imperative that we all do so to keep our loved ones and our communities healthy and safe. As you may be aware, Ontario and the federal government have reached out to the Atlantic region for help as Ontario battles the third wave of COVID-19. As Canadians and as New Brunswickers, it is wired into our DNA to want to help. We are seeking individuals who have the necessary skills and are able to go to Ontario to assist with their healthcare efforts. Specifically, Ontario is in need of nurses, respiratory therapists, perfusionists, and anesthesia assistants. While New Brunswick does not have the available resources within the regional health authorities, any healthcare workers who are retired or working outside of the healthcare system are being encouraged to assist. The federal government will cover all expenses involved, including salary, travel, and accommodations. To find out more on how to assist, please contact capital letters NBHEOC at gnb.ca or call 506-444-2882 or after hours 506-461-2880. This information will also be available through our daily social media posts <clears throat> and through our news release found under the featured news at gnb.ca. Both the social media post and the news release will be posted soon. Our vaccination rollout remains on schedule, and I'm happy to be able to say that we have vaccinated 28% of the New Brunswick population with at least the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. I am also pleased to announce that, as of today, People who are 65 and older may now schedule an appointment to receive their first dose of COVID-19 vaccine at a clinic offered by Vitalité or Horizon Health Network or by contacting a participating pharmacy. To book an appointment at a clinic offered by Horizon Health Network or Vitalité Health Network, you can register online at gnb.ca slash book a vaccine or call one 833 437-1424. There are currently 19,000 spaces available at clinics being offered by Vitalité and Horizon Health Networks over the next two weeks. To book an appointment through a pharmacy, check to see if the pharmacy has online booking or call the pharmacy directly. And if you're booking through a pharmacy, please be patient. Many pharmacies have already fully booked for appointments through the next few weeks. If required, a caregiver or individual can book an appointment on behalf of someone who is 65 <clears throat> and over. I encourage everyone who is eligible for a vaccine <coughs> and wishes to receive one to make an appointment. If you know someone who is eligible to <clears throat> book an appointment and hasn't done so, reach out and make sure they know that they are eligible. And please make sure they are aware that there are appointments available through clinics being hosted by the regional health authorities. If they need help booking an appointment online, please offer to help them. Assisting a relative or friend or neighbor to make an appointment to get vaccinated doesn't just help that person, it helps us move forward as a province. Every day the percentage of New Brunswickers uh, vaccinated gets a bit higher, edging us closer to a return to normal but we're not there just yet. I understand how exciting it must be to be finally back vaccinated, but please remember that not everyone has received their first dose. For that reason, even if you have received a vaccine, you must continue to follow public health rules, such as wearing a mask in public spaces and maintaining physical distancing. Continue to follow, continuing to follow the rules will help keep everyone in our province safe.
Since the beginning of the pandemic, truck drivers have played an important role ensuring items that New Brunswickers need are able to move in and out of our province, which in turn has helped our economy. Truck Drivers has been eligible to book an appointment for a vaccine since March 24, and we are making every effort to ensure they have access to vaccination. We appreciate your hard work, and we want to be sure that you are protected so that you can stay healthy. Beginning today, New Brunswick truck drivers who are regular cross-border commuters will have a dedicated line to call for assistance in booking their vaccination. That number is 1-833-724-0088. Agents can assist callers with questions about booking or they can book the caller right there on the phone. If the caller has to leave a message, they can be assured that an agent will get back to them as soon as possible. The Departments of Health and Justice and Public Safety are working with the Atlantic Provinces Trucking Association to get information about the toll-free line to individual truck drivers. Travel comes with risk, and the vital work that truck drivers do can take them outside of New Brunswick to areas where they have an increased chances of contracting the virus and bringing it back into the province with them. We encourage all truck drivers to book their appointments and to get vaccinated. It is understandable if you are feeling overwhelmed right now. This pandemic has had us all on an emotional roller coaster for more than a year. And too often, everything feels beyond our control. While some things are beyond our control, not everything is. I encourage you to focus on what you can do today to make a difference. Follow the rules and stay healthy and safe. Reach out to family and friends. And if you are eligible, make an appointment to get your COVID-19 vaccine. There is light at the end of this tunnel, and every day brings us a little bit closer. Thank you. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Ms. Shepard and Dr. Russell. Thank you, Mr. Shepard and Dr. Russell. We'll now proceed with questions from members of the media. Each reporter will have one question in the quickest follow-up. You have the right to pose your question in the official language of your choice. Please ensure your microphones are placed on mute. We will now proceed with uh, questions from the media. You can ask the question in the official language of your choice. Every journalist will have one question and a very quick follow-up question. Laurel Lyle, CTV. Um, my question would probably be best for uh, the minister, uh, but I'm wondering if, if there is a plan in place um, or in the works to divert vaccines to the northwestern region of the province to zone four? I, if Dr. Russell can certainly add anything if I've missed, but we've actually already done that. I think um, up until last week we had uh, diverted an additional 3,100 shots, I think, over a period of about 10 days. And um, and we're keeping open our eyes for and opportunities to ensure. At this time, I believe the province um, zone four is at about a 40% vaccinated uh, level um, compared to 28% of the province. Ms. Lyle, do you have a follow-up today? I do. Um, you know, as, as was mentioned, we're in uh, day 10 of lockdown for that region. Um, and unfortunately, the case numbers aren't uh, in, in the direction that you'd like to see. What else can be done um, to get things to start moving into the right direction? I'm going to, I'll start, and I think Dr. Russell can certainly follow follow up um, and add anything. We know how hard this is. This is a testament to how difficult keeping these variants in check is. And just when we think that, you know, we're okay and nobody around me has it and I can, you know, I, I need to go and do this and this and maybe it's not exactly the most important thing in the world, but darn it, I just want to get out for 10 minutes. <laughs> it's really easy to give in to that. And right now we need everyone to dig deep and to hold to the absolute necessities um, and maintain an extremely small bubble of their one household 
and continue on um, um, and follow um, public health advice. I'll just say, Laura, um, it is true uh, what Minister Shepard says. It is, it, is, it is really, really difficult to get ahead of the variants. Um, this is the UK variant. It is more contagious. It does cause more severe symptoms. Um, having more people vaccinated up there is obviously a, a great thing um, at this time. Continuing to follow public health, follow public health advice is really great. Um, and uh, I, think, I think, again, any kind of encouragement you can give to your neighbor, your friend, your community, fellow community members. As Minister Shepard said, if you can help somebody get signed up for a vaccine, um, if you can, if you, if, if you have friends and family who have mild symptoms, encourage them to get tested. Uh, it is the only way to get ahead and stay ahead of these variants. Thank you. Jean-Philippe Hughes, Radio Canada. Uh, oui, première question. My question is for Dr. Russell. What health zones? What health zone was the person from? The one who had the thrombosis. We did not give any more details on this because of the confidentiality. We want to avoid compromising the confidentiality of the that person by giving out the zone. Quebec today lowered the age for vaccinating people with AstraZeneca, like other provinces. Would you lower it to in, in regions uh, that are are struggling with COVID-19. Uh, so just to talk about this uh, blood clot case, this person has received treatment and uh, they have recovered. There is treatment for this disease. There is information on this on our website and on the national website. For the other provinces in AstraZeneca, the situation is different in different places. Here in New Brunswick, we will keep on giving this vaccine to people uh, 55 and over. But with information and analysis, we will keep on doing our own monitoring to see who we would like to vaccinate with the AstraZeneca vaccine. But we will keep on using whatever vaccine we have available to us at the time. Thank you. I think it's important to, to note that, um, you know, I think we've stated that New Brunswick has um, uh, a number, a, a lower number of doses of AZ left. They're booked in clinics um, this week, um, and they are um, um, they are scheduled um, to be to be dispersed. And so, I don't believe we're expected to receive any more AZ until well into May, if not the end of May. And so, we're just going to keep following this. Um, I think it. You know, I think um, we've we've seen how information comes on a daily basis through our COVID reality, and so I think that um, for now we're going to hold the line, and um, and we're going to continue to use to use it, and um, and for those who who um, who are able to book appointments, and um, they they should continue to do so and, and get the first vaccine that's available to you. Thank you very much, Travis Fortnum, Global TV. Hi there. Um... I'm wondering if, you, if someone could confirm how long, much time passed between when this uh, individual got their AstraZeneca shot and when the blood clot was born. Well, uh, I'm, my understanding is it was sometime in that period of five to twenty-one days, which is expect was it, which is the expected amount of time to have that adverse event happen. Uh, and as I said, this person was treated and has recovered. Portland, do you have a follow-up? Yep, very quick. Uh, for Dr. Russell, I, I think you might have touched on this, but my audio cut out. 
the outbreak ongoing in the Edmonton region, I'm wondering if you're able to speak to what is making it persist so strongly. Is it the variant? Well, I, I think that's the main reason. I, I think, again, it is much more contagious. It, it it transmits to close contacts before the case themselves have been identified. So that's why to get ahead of it and stay ahead of it, we have to isolate the contacts of contacts. And we need to make sure that we continue to uh, make sure people get tested, uh, if even if they have mild symptoms. And we have to make sure that people keep their their uh, keep to their one household bubble and continue to follow all public health measures. Um, I, I think we will see this turn around, but it, again, it's just taking longer because of the variant. We did have a few cases of community transmission as well. So, uh, but the new cases that we're seeing, um, I was speaking to one of the epidemiologists uh, uh, today, and the new cases we're seeing are the close contacts, like contacts of people that uh, had tested positive. So they're expected. They were already self-isolating. Uh, what what we don't want to see is is new cases popping up uh, where we have to start the process all over again with respect to uh, contact tracing and isolating contacts of contacts because it does mean that there will continue to be transmission. So again, we're hoping to nip this in the bud very shortly uh, as soon as we possibly can. But again, it's, it's a bit difficult to predict how long that'll take. And obviously, we're not looking forward to having any more new travel-related cases with, with any new outbreaks. Thank you. Jacques Quatre, CBC. Uh, good afternoon. Um, there's a video circulating in Northwest New Brunswick on social media in which uh, several RCMP and enforcement officers arrive at a gathering reportedly of about 25 people and are uh, harangued by one of the people there for about five minutes and then they leave without taking the names of the people at this gathering. And I'm wondering what that says about the enforcement levels uh, when we see these stubbornly consistent case rates in zone four. I'll, I'll take a stab at that. We're, we're trying really hard um, not to use the, um, the iron fist. Um, but the fact is, is we do need our partners at Public Safety to um, keep us aware of what's happening and to understand if we need to do anything to mitigate, um, to mitigate individuals' behavior. And so all I can say, and I, I have to admit, Jacques, I have not seen the video. I, I'm barely aware of it. Just as you were speaking about it, I think I had heard something about it. So I can't speak to it, um, you know, purposefully to understand the whole situation. But it is my hope that with our public safety partners, we would be addressing, um, you know, addressing serious situations like that. And um, we'll go back and get some information on it. Thank you. Mr. Poitra, do you have a follow-up today? Yeah, I see that in Ottawa, the NASI uh, announcement on updating AstraZeneca guidance was, was cancelled, and people there are talking about the New Brunswick blood clot case. Dr. Russell, was it put off because of this case, leading them to look at things again? Uh, no, actually. Um, in fact, I, you know, we're not the only province that has had uh, some adverse events, including uh, VIT. Um, other provinces have had some, and, and we'll continue to uh, investigate any events that we have. Um, it wasn't related. Thank you, Mr. Poitra. Andrew Watt, Brunswick News. Yeah, this is for the Minister or Dr. Russell. Um, any concerns that this blood clot case, as rare as it is, um, might lead to some more vaccine hesitancy, specifically regarding AZ? Well, Andrew, I'm going to start, and if Minister Shepherd wants to add, um, certainly, again, there's there's a double-edged sword with, with transparency information, and is, is the interpretation and perception. So um, as the scientists and, and specialists and, and uh, advisory folks do their work, as Health Canada does their work, and Special Advisory Committee and Public Health Agency of Canada, we're all working hard to make sure that uh, vaccines are safe and effective um, and are given appropriately um, to the right population at the right time. When the signal popped up that, yes, you can see these uh, issues um, in the UK data and the European data, 
We are seeing a few uh, reported cases here. Um, I guess we want people to be confident in the fact that they, they've th that the um, information has been uh, looked into and analyzed, and that we are pivoting and shifting our approach and our advice based on all of that on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. Uh, as Minister Shepherd said, that cha the information changes week to week. Um, in terms of vaccine hesitancy, obviously, if if the information is presented in a way that people can uh, understand the fact that the risks of COVID-19 right now in certain situations, obviously, if you're living in a very, very um, uh, high case count area, uh, you know, it's very clear that whatever vaccine you're offered is, is the vaccine that you should take because the risk of getting COVID is high and the risk of having a bad outcome from COVID is very high. Uh, with the AstraZeneca issue, we've seen uh, the reports as one in 100,000 doses of the vaccine to one in 250,000 doses of the vaccine. Um, and I know that um, everybody who's gotten a vaccine knows that there's epinephrine on, on, on standby in all the, all the uh, areas because we know that anaphylaxis can happen with, with any of the vaccines. So in terms of vaccine hesitancy, all I can say is that I, I do hope that the transparency Transparency and the way that the information is presented will allow people to make informed decisions and, and informed consent about the uh, risks and benefits of, of getting vaccinated. And right now, based on the variants of concern, um, the vaccines that we are offering, obviously from an efficacy perspective, from uh, preventing hospitalization, ICU admission and death, are all very, very effective. And as you know, our goal from the outset of the pandemic has been to avoid hospitalization, ICU admissions and deaths. Thank you. Mr. Wall, do you have a quick follow-up? I do. Um, Dr. Russell, you made quite a few comments there at the start about travel um, and, you know, people being, uh, you know, still traveling and more cases. Like, do you think we should be doing more to curb travel in and out of New Brunswick? Uh, just coming back to the other issue around the um, uh, the adverse events, um, in, in the cases here in Canada, when they get reported, they do get investigated, but uh, based on the information that we have in terms of the treatment options, the, the, the adverse events are treatable uh, So, uh, with respect to VIT, V-I-T-T. So coming to the travel issue, you know, Andrew, the issue around travel, I mean, you know, the Atlantic provinces have had these travel restrictions in place early on in the pandemic there weren't a, there weren't a lot of places that had travel restrictions other than places like New Zealand and Australia um, and some other countries so we know from the outset of the pandemic that travel restrictions work extremely well uh, in the face of the variants it, it's more challenging because it, it takes a more concerted effort to make sure that um, uh, people are self-isolating appropriately and safely, and that's harder with the variants of concern because they're so much more contagious. So we are recommending that people should not travel unless it's absolutely necessary, period. Uh, I don't know that we could actually restrict travel more than we already have. Uh, we do need essential goods to come across our borders. We, you know, again, there are there are a certain amount of limitations that we have right now in, in terms of people's uh, requirements for self-isolation, et cetera, and, and even testing requirements. I think there is a false sense of security when people get tested in the location that they're at prior to arriving in New Brunswick. Um, regardless of a negative test, you can become positive at any time during the 14 days after you arrive in New Brunswick. So everybody needs to self-isolate for 14 days um, after arriving here because it's really critical at this time to prevent the transmission of the variants of concern, including the UK variant, including the South African variant, and there are other variants of concern that are emerging all the time. Thank you. Gilles Duval, TVA. Can you hear me? Dr. Russell, we know that there have been a lot of vaccinations in the Northwest. Did everybody come to their appointments or did people come to their, or did, did the people not come? I did not hear that uh, some people registered but did not show up for their appointment. I did not hear that there were any vaccine doses that were unused. Do you have a follow-up? Yes. I would like to know what the situation is at the, the Saint-Jacques home. Is it longer to fight? 
outbreaks than it was before uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. I believe that yes, it is. When it's harder to manage uh, uh, outbreaks with variants, but we don't have any new cases at this time. Thank you. Alexandre Boudreau, L'Acadie Nouvelle. Hello, my question is for Dr. Rassen. Do you have a better idea now of what vaccine you will give to the people 55 and under who have gotten the first dose of AstraZeneca? You want to know how many people have had one dose of AstraZeneca who were 55 years and younger? No, I want to know what kind of a dose you are going to give to people who are under 55 who had AstraZeneca as a first dose. Right now, no. But we are awaiting more information, more data. There is some research being conducted in the UK to see what the results are when we give two doses of two different vaccines, one after the other. Do you have a follow-up? Yes. To the minister, I wanted to clarify. Are we not sending any vaccines to Ontario? Is it out of the question? Um, Ontario's request for assistance with regards to human resources is um, is is being put through a process and and we put out a call for that but um, with regards to more vaccines I think at this time um, you know the federal government is um, is 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 leaving things the way they are and um, I think that we'll just keep an keep an eye on things in the future we have a hot zone in our north which we've we've redirected um, some of our vaccine supply too and have uh, you know have have gotten them 12% higher higher numbers of people vaccinated in our north than in our, our um, the rest of the province and in our zone four. So we're still watching that. Thank you. Vicky Hogar, CHCO TV. Thank you, Bruce. My question is for Dr. Russell. The New Brunswicker who developed blood clots from AstraZeneca, what were the symptoms and the severity of the reaction and, and what is the treatment? So the um I can't really give too many details on the, on the situation other than they, they did meet the criteria for that particular um, adverse event. And um, there are certain tests that have to be done. And, and in terms of the treatment, um, the, the presentation is similar to a heparin-induced uh, thrombocytopenic uh, thrombosis, but the treatment uh, is, is non-heparin anticoagulants. So that list of uh, treatment options is on the Public Health Agency of, Web, uh, Public Health Agency of Canada website. Um, and Again, we when we look at the the fact that it happens between day could happen between day five and day twenty one of after somebody has received AstraZeneca. Again, one in one hundred thousand or one in two hundred fifty thousand doses. Um, when people are aware and uh, and clinicians are uh, aware uh, of the issues and the diagnosis um, and the capability of diagnosing and treating. Um, again, what we're hearing now is yes, it can happen. Uh, and it's recognizable and identifiable, and there's a treatment, and um, and that's a good thing. Ms. Hogarth, did you have a quick, quick follow-up? I do. Thank you, Dr. Russell. My follow-up is for Minister Shepard. Is there talk of delaying the Atlantic bubble reopening till further uh, later in May? I believe that there is a... Um um, there was a call with the premiers today, and there is some consideration of choosing a date further out, but the, the date has not yet been decided. Thank you. Marie Sutherland, CBC. Good afternoon. Uh, my question is for Dr. Russell. I noticed that on the province's dashboard that the Edmonston region has the lowest compliance with operational plans of all the zones at 82%. What kind of non-compliance uh, are you seeing, and what's being done to correct I, I think I'll take that one. We have been in, in touch with public safety and uh, having those conversations. And on the on on the surface, um, we're seeing very good compliance. Thank you. 
Um, I think that um, all we can do is continue to monitor and continue to drop in. We certainly we're not beyond issuing fines to businesses that are non-compliant if um, if they have been warned and worked with in the past. But we're trying to um, we're trying to be very educational about this and trying to be collaborative so that we can we can. Um, you know, we can support everyone during this very difficult time. The most important, the most important message is that we have to follow public health um, advice, and we we need to uh, we need to stick to our one household bubble. Ms. Sullivan, do you have a follow up? I do. Thanks, um, Dr. Russell. Uh, I have a question regarding the cluster of cases of the uh, unknown neurological disease. I'm wondering if you can tell us um, why there have not been any information sessions in the affected areas yet, and if you have a date when the website is expected to go live. I'm going to let Minister Shepard take that one. Yep. So the um, the Secretariat at the CJDSS is certainly working on the website, and it is expected to go live any day. Um, we know that this um, this this mysterious illness creates a lot of anxiety and we certainly want to have as much information that is available to the public. Um, um, as for uh, specific um, uh, briefings in each area, I don't have a date for you on that and I, I'm, I guess I will ask you know, uh, of our um, public health department as to what is being, you know, what, what requests have come in and, and uh, what information we would have to convey that I guess that would help to lower the stress site. So at this time, we don't have a date. Thank you, Ms. Ellen. Maud Montembeau, Radio Canada. Bobby Jean McKinnon, CBC. Yes, thank you. Uh, Minister Shepard, with today's announcement that people who are 65 and older can now book appointments for their shots, how quickly are you expecting these next age brackets to move, given that a lot of people 55 and older have already received their AstraZeneca shots? Well, it's really yet to be seen. These appointments um, can fill up quite quickly. From I know that the, the phones start ringing from the time we announce it at this press conference. So I'm expecting the same type of reaction today. Um, this, you know, we're getting into our largest uh, demographic group. So I, you know, I, I think again, I can only only point to the fact that we want to have everyone vaccinated by the end of June, and so I'm going to suspect this age group is going to take, um, you know, is going to take a few weeks to uh, to comb through. We have a follow up, Ms. McKinnon. Yes, I do. Thank you. Um, uh, Dr. Russell, since travel is riskier, uh, what is the ideal way to self-isolate now, and will the province change its self-isolation recommendations to require people to self-isolate in a different household or for a longer amount of time or, or some other kind of changes? Well, my understanding is the mandatory order already has in it that if you cannot safely self-isolate in your own household that you should not safe, you should not self-isolate in your household. And throughout the pandemic, there has always been the option of reaching out uh, to, I believe it's the Red Cross through JPS um, in terms of being able to have different accommodations. So in terms of the variance of concern and the risks of self-isolation in a household with other people, it, it is riskier now than it has been because of how contagious the variants are. If you, if you can self-isolate outside of the household, then that is the safest thing to do. Um, if you are self-isolating, the information that we have on our website, I think, is still accurate in terms of not sharing a bathroom, not sharing utensils, staying in a different room the entire time. Um, again, it's, it's, it, it is much riskier because the contagiousness of, and the transmission of the new variants of concern are, again, so much greater. Nathan DeLong, Miramichi leader. Good afternoon. My question is for Dr. Russell. The uh, superintendent of uh, Anglophone North School District has alluded to uh, a return of more traditional graduation ceremonies being possible this year. Of course, that's pending uh, COVID protocols at the district and uh, facility level and uh, 
depends on how the guidelines of the province might look at that time. So uh, I was wondering what your response is to uh, that idea. I'm going to take that one. Um, so all of all of these kind of activities, you know, are 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 vetted through EECD and public health. They work together, public safety even, to try to understand what you know what our what our status is going to be at any one time. And right now, you know, I don't think we can pre predict beyond a couple of weeks um, at this time frame. So I think it would be premature to judge that we could go to any kind of. Um, um, any kind of a of a judgment on what could be, um, you know, by mid June. So I think uh, I think that it will be evaluated on an ongoing basis, and and decisions will be made at the soonest possibility. Do you have a follow up, Mr. DeLong? Yes, I do. Uh, definitely see what you're saying about the uh, situation changing quickly and being hard to predict. I was just was wondering if uh, the province uh, has any plans to issue guidelines for graduation events specifically. I'm sure EECD is working on that and we can try to get you an answer to see if, um, uh, no doubt, I'm sure there will be guidelines um, if, if graduation ceremonies are able to proceed, but I don't want to, um, I don't want to anticipate what that would be. Thank you, Meg Cunningham, Thank you. HNA, Sackville. Thank you, Bruce. Minister Shepard, people protested along the Nova Scotia and New Brunswick border on Sunday. Some streams of continued closure are doing damage to their families so that they can't access the support systems that are just 10 minutes away. How do you respond to what those protesters are saying? COVID has been a very difficult time. And whether that service is 10 minutes away or one hour away, we have public health guidelines that are put in place to keep New Brunswickers safe. Um, our border measures have served us very well over this last year. Um, with the variant, it is even more so. I've commented to not only my colleagues, but you know, people in the public, that this, this, this last stretch is probably the hardest we've ever gone through because we see that light at the end of the tunnel. We see how close we are, but we're also extremely vulnerable. And you can look across Canada to see how this third wave easily gets out of control. The measures are in place for a reason. Thank you. Ms. Cunningham, do you have a follow-up? I do, also for Minister Shepard. Some rotational workers have also reported that they're being denied re-entry into New Brunswick, even though they follow all instructions when they pre-register. Why are there still inconsistencies when it comes to border pre-registration for rotational workers? I'm, I have not heard that, so I, I really can't comment on it. Thank you. Adil Ibrahim, CBC. Thank you. A uh, question for Dr. Russell. I was wondering if you can uh, give us a look behind the curtain a little bit about the process um, of how you decide to share information about the uh, rare blood clot. So, for example, why are we only hearing about this now if the reaction occurred in March? Can you give us some idea about what kind of discussions you had? So there is a process, and uh, the process applies for all adverse events. It's the same process um, in terms of get it getting flagged uh, and then the investigation in terms of the diagnosis for this particular adverse event. Um, and so there are other tests and results that they had to wait for to confirm. Uh, and I think one of those tests had to go to Hamilton, I believe. So uh, from the time that it occurs to the time that the actual diagnosis uh, is received and finalized based on uh, blood tests and specialist involvement, um, that's, that, again, that's why it takes so long. And then we have to report to Public Health Agency of Canada um, all of the adverse events. Um, and once that process is done, then we can report it publicly. Ibrahim, do you have a follow-up today? Yes, yeah, so when was um, the, you know, the blood clot confirmed for sure? And, and uh, you know, how long was it between then and now? Uh, I believe it was last night when the final confirmation came in. So, and again, it, it did happen uh, several weeks ago. And, and as I've mentioned, uh, this is a treatable condition, and this person was treated successfully and has recovered. Thank you, Ms. Ibrahim. Maud Montembeau, Radio Canada.
Voilà la fin de notre... This concludes uh, every day's uh, update.